Hello everyone, today I'm presenting DeepFlow, a distributed tracing framework that provides non-intrusive data collection and rich network information. This paper is the joint work of Tsinghua University and Yunshan Networks. I'm one of the co-authors, Xinrei. Knowing how the entire system works has always been a crucial demand for the IT crew. Systems are rapidly growing and evolving, from monolithic applications to distributed systems, from periodical releases to agile development, from bare machines to cloud native scenarios. As a result, we need stronger tools to match this increasing level of complexity. Monitoring becomes observability. Logging, metrics, and tracing are known as the three pillars of observability. Among them, logging focuses on natural semantics, metrics are the derived numerical properties, and tracing records the end-to-end -end journey of every user's request, which is especially helpful under the above new scenarios. Now, let's check out an example to see how tracing differs itself from the other two pillars and what the limitations of existing tools are. Imagine you are an operations engineer in the cloud infrastructure department of an e-commerce company. One day, business intelligence developers report that their service encountered jittering in end-to-end -end latency. Nothing will have been discovered after their careful inspection of application logic, so naturally, they blamed network connectivity and reached out to you for help. You open the monitoring panel of all metrics, expecting several red colored outliers to be the culprit. At this time, all of them seems well functioned. Although logins contains more detailed information, it's much impossible to manually filter the problematic part out from tons of common cases. Without concrete evidence from BI group, you conclude it's due app logic's problem and refuse to do that days of investigation on logs. With no tracing tools deployed, the jittering problem stalls between two departments and can't be solved. The clients continue to suffer from unstable, poor services. So, what will happen with current tracing tools deployed, such as Yeager? The BI group would happily show their evidence to cloud operators now. Both BI and Mongo components involve Yeager API their boundaries. So we can clearly see that in some trace, there's an extremely long gap between BI starts the call and Mongo receives the call. However, no matter how cloud operators test the communication between these two components, they find nothing wrong. With the help of tracing, the problem successfully narrows down to one half, but it starts again and clients are still suffering. Let's wait here and think what really happens during this long period of time. Actually, nobody knows for sure. Jaeger is a manual tracing tool, which means only spans directly defined in source code will be recorded. All other unmodified components are invisible. The flow now comes to help. After deploying it on the fly, operators find something quite surprising. A hidden component occurs between BI and Mongo. And it turns out that one of the instances of this middleware component doesn't update to the newest version, which is account for this occasionally long end-to-end -end latency. The issue comes from neither the BI nor the cloud group but yet another middleware group who haven't instrumented their code with Yeager APIs and been ignored by the two groups before. This might seem dramatic, but it's actually a real case encountered in one of our typical clients and real world is never utopia. Because of the troublesome changes of passcode, operation team's efforts to improve observability aren't always supported by other developers. But with deep flows non-intrusive out-of-the-box tracing ability, no further effort will be required from the app developers team. Indeed, there are also other non-intrusive or automatic tracing tools. 
but they fail to meet other requirements, such as portability. And detailed discussion can be found in our paper. So, how does DeepFlow meet all these requirements? The eBPF technology inspired us. In short, it provides a virtual machine in the kernel that enables the execution of BPF programs written by users at designated hook points, which perfectly match all our demands. At the highest level, the flow includes two components, agent and server. An agent is deployed in each host machine to first, capture trace data in kernel space, and second, construct spans in user space. The centralized server stores the spans collected from all agents and assembles them into traces. Besides, we also provide rich third-party integration support, including other spans under open telemetry formats. To save our time, I won't go through implementation details. Instead, I would like to introduce our key design insights by answering the following three questions. First of all, where shall we capture trace data from? We propose this a narrow waste instrumentation model with ingress and egress system calls. Currently, with a high degree of decoupling, the execution of microservice components are basically triggered by its communication. Instrumenting all data communication system calls at component boundaries is well enough for basic tracing. We provide the comprehensive skeleton and third-party user-defined instrumentations fill in the flesh and blood. To some extent, this 10 listed communication system calls to the whole distributed system is just like the IP layer to the whole network stack. Secondly, how do we collect trace data using eBPF hooks? For the convenience of later assembling, we need to collect these four types of data, program, network, tracing, and syscall. Some of them are collected when syscall enters the kernel, and some are collected at the exit point. Therefore, each syscall is instrumented by two hooks, and the enter and exit information are combined within hash map. Finally, how to assemble the collected data into traces? Traditional tracing tools often generate per request unique identifiers and propagate it along the message with specific headers known as explicit contact propagation. Default, on the contrary, changes nothing in the message. Instead, we claim that the network related data collected by eBPF are sufficient for trace collection. We call it implicit context propagation. As for the detailed algorithm from data point to spans to traces, please also refer to paper. Okay, now we're done with the system design. Let's move on to evaluation. Over the years, DeepFlow has already identified over 71 critical performance anomalies for more than 26 companies. For example, in one user case, operators already spent an entire day solving an endpoint timeout issue without any progress. However, within 15 minutes after DeepFlow's deployment, they figure out that one of the Nginx ingress pods has an error. Besides, our test bed evaluation demonstrates that DeepFlow's overhead is negligible for the system being monitored. We first examine the trace collection overhead of DeepFlow agent. After repeatedly involved 100,000 system calls before and after agent's deployment, we conclude that DeepFlow only adds less than 588 nanoseconds to latency, which is negligible for these I.O. APIs. We also conducted an end-to-end -end test over system circuit, comparing YIRG and DeepFlow. Requests per second decreased by less than 7%, though some were larger than YIRG's 4%, we collect 18 spans, and YIRG only collects 4. In conclusion, Evolving distributed scenarios such as microservice have new requirements on tracing frameworks. DeepFlow meets all these requirements by first, establishing a network-centric tracing plan, and secondly, achieve implicit context propagation. Please feel free to try DeepFlow out at our official website for community members. Thank you for listening.